Hello, everyone. You have come here to watch me type. All right. Again. Thank you. So, my talk, which uh, many people were were uh, in, had bated breath, you know, waiting for for the topic, is about programming language, uh, and it's not about programming languages because really who wants to watch a talk about just programming languages? I, I say as though I would not watch said talk. Um, really it's about programming the language that we use, like all of the languages that we use. So spoken language, written language, uh, when we talk about things, we're programming each other, we're, we're programming ourselves, uh, and we often sort of have uh, resistance to this idea of, of considering what our words mean and the way that we construct sentences, right? So recently someone on Twitter sort of just asked into the air, and I'll, I'll the, the correct uh, qu quotes there, uh, you know, uh, when I use the word dudes uh, to, to a mixed group of people, is it, is it weird? Does, does, is it offensive? And you, you sort, of, you're sort of like, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've gone over this. It's, it's a thing. Please stop. Just, just try harder. Um, and really, that resistance is refusing or, or having a, a problem, sort of acknowledging that that our language is a tool that we use to shape thought and to share thought. Right? So I'm going to imagine that I have some deep understanding of how language came to be. Um, I'm imagining in a way that helps my narrative work. So if you have a deeper understanding and you come talk to me later, that's great, but this works for my story. Okay? Um, so I'm going to imagine that initially, right before there were words, Right? And you know, there were a bunch of people. Uh, we had to create early abstractions, just, just basic, you know, the most urgent abstractions that we needed. And I would ask the audience for, for examples. In fact, uh, you, you, sir, what, what is one urgent example that you can think of that you would need as you think caveman? Think like li fire. Well, that's a little late. But, but, but I, would, I would admit, food, yeah. right, food, right? That is like one urgent thing that you would need. You would be able to, you'd want to be able to say that there is food, and I guess you would also want to be able to say over there, <laughs> right? Or, or I found food, or you would want to be able to shout food or something like that. And then maybe, maybe first, I don't know if food or danger would come, you know, but, but very close, very close. Right, once you figured out that you could represent things like that, then maybe shelter, and after all of that, maybe the specifics of it. Right? Like maybe at first all you can say is danger. Just just general danger. <laughs> and then eventually you start to say, oh, danger like something that might eat you. Or danger like you might fall. Or danger like uh, you know, it's sharp, or something like that. And all of those things, in my opinion, are early abstraction. Right? Just early abstraction. After all of that gets sorted, or at least enough of that that you start to have some maybe grammar or some idea of, yeah, this is a thing that we do. We exp express ourselves with our voice. Then maybe you start to think about yourself and being something and like, I found this food, or I found this, or you know, I'm going to eat, or I'm hungry. Uh, and I think that that order is, is fairly important because we have an idea of self and we would like to believe, and honestly I, I do believe, that it is something that separates us from, from animals or something, right? And we can have long discussions about that later. I like long discussions. Um, but after we have this idea of self and, and others, right, because along with the idea of self, I think, comes the idea of someone else, then we have this idea of narrative 
and selves interacting and you know, other, other things being involved. And I swear to you, this will come back to programming in a period of time. Uh, I cannot guarantee you how, how long uh, it will take, right? And then we sort of start standing on the shoulders of giants. After all of those things are met, after we can tell stories about ourselves and dangers and food, then we start having these abstractions that we pass on and, and you know, math, right? Or, or science, we start talking about things and then learning from someone else who you know, taught us first sort of where the danger is in general or how to recognize danger, and then we, we built on that, right? And I really wanna circle back to this thing that I said in passing that Language is a machine, and we should probably define what I mean when I say machine. A machine is any device that transmits a force or directs its application. And in this case, our force is our mind and our thoughts. The idea to consider and project into the future and consider the past. So, why do I care about all of this? Why have I gone on for a few minutes about my conjecture as to how language came about? Well, language structures the way that we you know, represent concepts. And I tried to take a picture of Rob's slide where he uh, talked about what we can say shapes what we can imagine because this is the same idea. Right? If we have a word for it, we are influencing how we think about a thing. So when we say, hey, you guys, or hey, dudes, or whatever, we're shaping how we address a group of people or the specific group of people that we're addressing. All right, so I'm gonna skip this blank slide that would have a lovely picture of Rob. <laughs> now, I told you eventually we would get to programming uh, and here's a, a lovely, fairly simple, if you already know Swift, but if you don't know Swift, it's okay, I'll talk you through it. Uh, at the beginning, we have a description of what we accept in this function named lengths. We accept an array of strings, and we return an array of ints. We have a variable called counts, and then we iterate over that array that we received, we count the characters in the string, we put it in the array counts, and we return that, and it seems pretty clear what we're doing. Now, I'm gonna argue that yes, this is clear. It's perfectly clear. But there is something about how we have described this process that doesn't capture an aspect of what we're doing. This is doing the same thing. It has the same end goal. It has the same name. But this time we're mapping over the list. And in this, in this map, we hand in a closure where we take one item and we get its count of characters and we return that. And then somehow map handles the, the creation of the array. Now, honestly, if this is all you're doing in the function, I have no argument as to which one you use. I really don't. Both of them are clear. Both of them convey what you're doing. But this, in my opinion, captures the idea that we are transforming the first list into the second list, and that there is a matching of order and structure to those lists. That's why I love map. Right? I, I really appreciate the fact that if I see the word map, I think to myself, I am preserving structure, and I'm making a new, new thing that has the same shape in general as the first thing. So is this a functional programming talk, TJ? Like, are you gonna, are you gonna take this further, right? We just heard Rob tell us that Swift is not a functional programming language, right? So are you gonna come on here and contradict Rob? Of course I am. Of course I am. Right? Right. 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 Now, now I'm, not, I'm not really going to you know, contradict him too much. I mean, 
but yeah, I, I like contradicting Rob, it's a thing. I followed him all the way here just to do this, <laughs> right? right? Um, no, no, the, the thing that I really care about is, is that when we program, when we speak, when we interact, we're developing language, right? Uh, and now I'm gonna talk about programming languages and programming, and I'm gonna try to match the narrative of sort of how we work through developing programming uh, parallel to, to what we just spoke about. What do I mean? Um, now, this is not strictly the order I believe that, that uh, programming has worked in, but we'll talk about that in a moment. But early abstraction is probably like a Fortran or a Algol or you know machine code or whatever, just basic things in programming. Right? We, you know, back some, some time long ago, some people put cards in machines and found a moth and called it a bug. Yeah, early abstractions, right? We, we have this thing that we want to do computations with, and we figured out a way to make that happen. Cool. Great. Well, uh, we're still there, I think. We haven't really made things that much nicer. Uh, there's a, there's a phrase in Python, batteries included, that I have, honestly, for maybe 10 years, really adored. And it's this idea that you have an ecosystem where if someone comes in and they say, I like geology, and I want this computer to think about geology, or I want to use this computer to think about geology, there's, the batteries should be included when they start to learn Python. They should be able to say, like, import geology, and then just do geology, <laughs> whatever that means, right? Just, just, just do it, right? And, and yeah, yeah, I, I think that is the important thing, and this is why I like functional programming. Um, but honestly, functional programming is not the point, and you might say again, but TJ, don't you like wanna marry functional programming? <sighs> No, no, I have, and don't read this code. There's a lot of it, it's, it's very tiny, that's not the point. I write all of this nonsense, it's beautiful nonsense in my opinion, because I wrote it, uh, so that I can get to this, which is a little, bit, a little bit better, right? But I have realized over the course of, you know, the eight, nine years, that I've been writing iOS uh, code and you know, just writing code in general, that I don't really care about the programming that I'm doing. I care about language. I, I love language. And so I can look at a functional programming construct and love how math is captured and, and how when you use the word map, you're conveying some idea um, but I, I really, in, in this, this, this example, right, what I actually cared about is what's at the bottom. This idea of a grammar and clearly conveying the thing, and you can see it sort of hidden in those lines up there beforehand, that's, that's the beautiful thing in my opinion. And this idea of abstracting away to where someone who cares about grammar and cares about language and linguistics. I want someone to look at my code and, and within the nonsense of Swift, see something that they know and that they can speak about and, and say, ah, well, based on the fact that I see this, I can sort of guess what the rest of it's doing. And I feel like as an industry, we're not really marching towards that at a pace that is reasonable. Right? We, we still hold a lot of secrets. It's still code. Right? Now, more examples of, of sort of why I really uh, get up and write code. Hopefully you all can read this at the top. Uh, this is another example from that same library where given two strings, I can tell you, all right, well, this is a grammar that accepts both of those strings. Or some math, right? Because I love some math. I, I, I'm sorry, Maxim. Uh, this is as much math as I'm going to sneak in. Uh, you know, well, okay, okay. He, he, he was like, well, at the end of the day, maybe you don't do a lot of math. Maybe you don't do that. Maybe you don't do that. 
And then this is, this is the library that I've been working on for a very long time. Um, and it's a music library. And again, my goal is to have, to capture the language that you would use as a musician as well as I can as a developer. So that yes, if you know Swift, you can figure out what the library does. But if you don't know Swift, maybe your knowledge of music is the entrance to figuring out just enough Swift to do geology. Right? All right. So now I'm going to throw a curveball and say, all right, well, we, we, we have this whole idea of self and identity. What does it mean to be a programmer? And earlier today, we heard, oh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really a computer scientist, which is specific enough for me to say, OK, OK. But I want people who write lots of Swift or lots of programming you know, programs to say, I'm not really a programmer. Because what this means is that they were passionate about something. They imported geology. Yeah, yeah. Someone's going to make a library named Geology soon, right? <laughs> and then they did geology. And they did it in Swift or Python or whatever so much that someone was like, you're a programmer. And they were like, I'm not really a programmer. This is a sign that we have included the batteries, that we have succeeded in, in actually capturing language and, and abstracting things away to the point where someone Someone achieved something that they know about, right? Like they, they took the language that they had and they weren't held back by this language that we made. Now, we made all the language, sure, but we are very deliberately making programming languages. Some people would argue with me about the word deliberately in that sentence, but we're doing it, right? And... Um, I, 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 this is one of the things that I just want us to think about a lot, right? We have a new opportunity with this new language of Swift to, to decide what, an, what our ecosystem looks like and decide who we try to include in terms of just domains of knowledge. As an iOS developer, right now, what, it, what, that, you know, what being an iOS developer meant before Swift was that you make iOS apps. And that was the primary thing that defined a lot of what you did. And yes, there were a lot of people who came into it for fun, but you made iOS apps. Right? And that's not likely to change too dramatically, but I want to recapture that idea of the first few years of, of iOS where people who were like, I like cats, so I made a cat app. Right? I like, I like fish, or I like geology. Right? And, and that, that was it. They, they were not trying to you know, become contractors or, or whatever, and that, you know, paying the bills is fine. But they, they saw this opportunity, and the barrier to entry in terms of language was low enough that they made it. Now, okay, so now, now, uh, now I'm gonna preach at you uh, a little bit. Please, mind your pronouns. And now, when I say mind your pronouns, I don't literally just mean mind your pronouns, right? When you say he, she, they, you, dudes, whatever. I mean, think about the words that you say. Think about the words that you choose. They're meaningful, right? When we talk about programmers and we say a programmer uh, receives a spec and he, we've made a decision, right? I would love if we used the gender neutral pronouns because that would be amazing, but that's not going to happen soon, right? That's, that, there's a little bit of a leap there. But you can say they, or you can switch it up, or you can, even if you just forget and go through a whole long narrative with he's, just acknowledge that you did that thing and, and move on. Don't push back, don't you know, get bitter, don't pout, whatever. Because we are programming people with language. In the same way that we are deliberately creating programming languages, we are deliberately choosing the words that we use to describe the people who do programming. <coughs> Presence is language. Representation is language. Now, you know, all you people are lovely. There are not a lot of people in the room who look close enough to me to say that I would say that they look like me. Um, and that says something. That is a statement. Now, we're diverse, right, in the room. I'm not saying that, you know, we need some magical number or whatnot, but whenever you enter a room and there are, 
there's an absence of people who look like you. And it's a community, right? It's not a random gathering. You have to make an evaluation of whether or not there are few people who look like you because there's danger to people who look like you or act like you. And I say, look, I should be careful because you know, I'm, I'm making a choice. It's not just look, it's you know, who act like you, who believe like you, or whatever. When you enter a space and there aren't people who resemble you in some form or fashion, you have to figure out pretty quickly, is it because there's danger? Is it because we didn't know about it? Is it become whatever? And depending on your identity, this evaluation can be life or death, right? You can enter a space and find out that you are not just like mildly unwelcome. That you genuinely should have left immediately. And yes, this is a heavy thing to say. And like I said, I'm not necessarily condemning anything in terms of the space, but children see this language much more clearly than we do. If you show a child a bunch of programmers and they all look a certain way that is not like that child, that child's going to infer something. So we're programming, like we're, we're creating language, we're making decisions that convey something. Some of it is about context, right? Some of what we're saying by having you know, a certain makeup is that historically, people who blah, 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 sure. So it's not just current intent. Sometimes it's past intent. Sometimes it's happenstance. Right. All right. So we're, we're going to take a moment, clear our palates. It was a bit heavy. People stopped laughing. There was a chuckle. I, I, I feel you. I feel you coming back. Right. And after that, then we can we can get complex narrative again. Right. Like. Once we figured out sort of what it means to be a programmer, who programs, and all that stuff, and we have basic language, we can start to make more complex things. We can build a community where we say, ah, we write programs, and let's write more complicated programs. Right, let's do this together. And that's where I feel like we are, but I also feel like we jumped directly to here immediately. Once we were like, um, uh, what's this? Uh, I think I'll call it a computer. Ah, oh, yes, now we have computer societies and we have universities and all of that cropped up. And we still haven't sorted out the early abstraction thing. It's still really hard to say fairly complicated things that are divorced from the computer's inner workings. So, yeah, I, I, think, I think we have a lot of work to do here. Like, this is what we do when we write iOS apps. This is what we do when we write servers that communicate with clients, that communicate with embedded things. This is complex. But there's still a lack of abstraction. Right. My apologies. And then, shoulders of giants, right? This is, this is still, we love this quote in the, in the programming community, standing on the shoulders of giants. Right. And I think we jumped to this idea a little more quickly than we should have. We still have a lot of groundwork to do. We still have a lot of sorting out what, what it means to be a developer, what we want to capture in all of these languages that we create every day. Right. There's basically a new programming language, you know, probably within the span of this talk. Right. And, and for what? And I don't say that to belittle the effort, because I think it's beautiful. But I really think that there, there's an opportunity for us to reconsider what it means to create programming languages and to program language and, and to speak to each other. And what are we trying to actually accomplish with all of this software? Right? Yeah, venture capital, angel investors, whatever. Uh, but what else? Right? Because all of those things come and go in a way that, that language outlasts. If someone comes to your programming language or your platform or your app or the things that you've built 20 years hence, what are they going to infer from your motives? Right? If someone looks at my code, they'll say, he wasted a lot of time on some music and math stuff. You really liked that. Didn't ship much. but really liked that, right? And that's true. 
And I, like that, I, I'm okay with that. Um, so what, what are you saying with the software that you write? What are you saying with the people who you invite into your community? What are you saying when you talk, right, in the various ways that you talk? Thank you.